right, so I think we're just about at time. I'll just remind you, you'll need some paper towel, a couple of buckets of water. Because the way we're going to do the, the um, uh, painting today, we won't need blow dryers, um, but if you do have a blow dryer on hand and you want to uh, make that dry a little bit faster, that's entirely up to you, but not a requirement because we're going to work around it so that we can let things dry naturally. My name is Kathy. I teach watercolor. This is a, a free class. I teach Tuesdays and Thursdays for free. I try to come up with a number of projects that are interesting and different so that when you go away and you try these new uh, techniques that you learn on your own, you can apply them to different projects so you're not stuck with only painting trees or only doing water. So I'm giving you all different things. We, um, I'm actually thinking that we've got this, this um, flower to do today. So I'm thinking at some point we'll, if anybody is dolphin lovers, maybe we'll do a dolphin. That looks like a fun project to teach. And when I teach, I learn too. So I learn, have to learn the project before I teach it. So this is wonderful for me as well. So bless you all for being on with me. Thank you. We'll just get into art mode. So I like to take some deep breaths, a deep breath in, hold it at the top and then just release. And then um, and we'll do that three times. And as we do that, then we'll just drop our shoulders down. So really release any tension that you've got in here if you're able. And any troubles that you've got, just set those aside at the parking lot for, for this hour, this gift of an hour for yourself. Congratulations for coming on. Good for you for doing something special and unique for you. So with that, we'll take a deep breath in and release. Just let that go. And another deep breath in. And release. And one more deep breath in. And out. Really let that go. And as you hold on to your paintbrushes today, just, just have a light grip, not a hanging on. Um, like it's the last thing you'll ever do, like it's dear life. It's, this is just uh, an art class and this is just a piece of paper. And if you're doing acrylics, then it's just a canvas. It's, it's, it's um, uh, subject to change. We can add things, we can take things away, we can move things around. Um, and you've got the sketch. Hopefully you've received that sketch and been able to draw that sunflower and that ladybug. And you can redo that. And so if you want to do the background a different color, if you want to um, change the color of the ladybug, and that's entirely up to you. It's, we're going to be pretty free uh, flowing with the colors with it today. Colors that you'll use are ochre, yellow, orange. If you don't have orange, yellow and red makes orange. Uh, red. Uh, what other colors we've got on there? Black. Um, maybe some brown. Uh, perhaps a little bit of, of uh, burnt sienna if you've got it for the center of the flower or for the outer edge of the flower. And so I'm going to start, and now I had a bigger brush out. I was going to start with a bigger brush, but I'm going to go a little bit smaller. I'm going to use an, a number, it's actually a number eight, but if you have a number six or an eight is fine. Just a rounded brush. And when I did this originally, um, I, I used water and it gave me a nice flowy look on the outside, but it doesn't give me quite the same control that I'd like. So I'm just, I'm not going to do wet on wet. I'm going to do wet paint on dry here. And I'm using a phthalo blue. So all I'm doing is dipping my brush into the water and I'm just going to tap just to make sure that there's no excess water on the steel part of my brush. I don't want that to drip onto my canvas. And then I'm going to take phthalo blue, which is a very bright blue, and I'm actually going to paint. So I'm going to paint that blue in and around, uh, around, so I'm leaving the flower untouched. So I'm painting the outside edges. I'm painting around the ladybug. So very carefully around 
her head. And it's okay if I paint over her little antlers, but I'm painting around her body so that I leave her body white. So this will take a few minutes and we're going to paint right to the outside edge, right to the top, right to the bottom, right down to the side of that petal. So as I said, it will take us all a few minutes to paint that on. So we're just using wet paint on dry, not to worry if your colors aren't completely even. If you have some lighter or darker spots, that's okay. You see some is a little bit lighter, some is a little bit darker. We're just gonna cover that outside surface. And I mean, as I said, I'm using phthalo blue. If you want to use an ultramarine blue, if you don't have phthalo, that's okay. Just use the same blue for the whole other surface outside of the flower. So I'm just putting that on. As I said, I'm not 100% concerned about it being completely even. It can be lighter or darker. I'm just putting that, it's just the look of a sky, nice and bright on the outside. And because I'm doing wet on dry, it gives me the opportunity to change some of those colors a little bit. I can move it a little bit. I can adjust. If I add a little bit of water to my phthalo blue, it goes thinner, it goes a little bit lighter. And we're just covering the surface. I'm used to painting every day. I paint several times a day. I paint several projects, so I may be a little faster at painting. Don't think that you need to keep up with me and race at it. Take a deep breath and just enjoy the process. We're just getting the color on for the outside surface outside of our flower. And it's okay if you paint over those little antlers, antlers, um, antennae, antlers, and antlers on a ladybug. That's quite the ladybug. <laughs> well, as I said at the beginning, if you wanted to, if you felt the need to, you can go ahead and use a blow dryer. But we are going to work on this project on a different spot so that blow drying is not a requirement. And that's a nice thing that I like to do um, when I'm painting is avoid those wet spots so that they don't run and I don't get that feathering and starring unless I, I want that. But you can see I've got lighter and darker spots. And I, I believe that's going to add to the picture, not having it completely uniform. But it's up to you. Maybe you want yours completely even. There's no right or wrong. 
So what we've done is just paint around the outside edge of the, the petals and left the ladybug at the top of the leaf white. And we'll paint some color on her later. She has little antennae and we've painted right over those. We can recreate that with black paint. But at this point, we're just doing the outside edge. So this is finished product when we're done. So we're just at this stage, just at the outside edge, just doing petals or away from the petals. If you're ready to move on, if you've got your blue done, we'll just wait another few minutes. Take a deep breath, have a light touch on your brush. Drop those shoulders. I know they're up around your ears right about now. Just drop them down. And someone's asking, they said they don't have ochre, but they have a uh, gamboge, which is fine. Um, if you wanted to create ochre, ochre is yellow and brown mixed together, more yellow than brown. So you can create your own if you decide to. And as I said at the beginning, we're, we were doing that first and we're not going to paint anywhere near that blue. So our next step, we'll, we'll move ahead. Hopefully a, little, a few more people are ready and we'll go into ochre. So I'm just, I'm using wet on dry. So I'm not wetting the whole canvas and I'm painting the center of my flower, ochre. So this is wet on dry. I'm using a number three pointed brush. You don't need that larger brush anymore. I'm just getting a little bit smaller. And I do have brushes that are actually a squirrel's tail. I have brushes that are a zero, which is bigger than a squirrel tail. Um, but I do find, unless I'm doing really fine, delicate work, my number three pointed brushes seem to give me really good coverage. They give me the point. They give me enough uh, that I can get close into corners and areas that I need to. But we're just doing that center of the flower in ochre. Well, as I said, if you have gamboge and that's what you want to use, that's fine. If you want to make ochre, you can mix a yellow, a lemon yellow or a medium yellow with a, just a touch of brown. The watercolor dries 20 to 30% lighter than when you put it on. So when we come back near the end of this flower, at the end of this um, demonstration, we'll put fresh ochre on top of this ochre that we've just done. And because it will be fresh, it will be darker than what's on there now. So we still want to stay away from that blue edge that we've done. And we, now we want to stay away from that ochre that we've done to give it a chance to dry. And with black paint wet on dry, I'm still using my number three. I'm going to follow the rounded line right by the petals in black. If it's not completely perfect, don't worry about it. We are going to add some other color. You will be able to adjust and fix some of your edges, but we just want that highlighted just in plain black. You don't have black and some of you don't, you have Payne's Gray, Payne's Gray would be fine. Just go over your line. You want that white space in between. So if I show you the finished picture, you can see we've got the black 
Then we have orange and some brown dots. So we want that black line there. The next color I'm going to introduce is burnt umber or brown. And along the line where we have the ochre, I'm going to put a series of dots like beads just along the outer edge of the ochre. So the little beads, I'm just touching my brush, I'm just doing a line, a beaded line, and I'm going to do that all the way to the bottom. This is wet on dry and it's burnt umber or brown. I'm just doing a beaded line all the way from the top to the bottom or bottom to top, whichever way you want to do it. And if it's lighter or darker in some spots, that's okay. It looks more natural. So it's just a series of dots from top to bottom. So this is not about perfection. If you want it to be perfect, that's fine. But this is not a class about perfection. It's about progress, trying something new, learning some different projects different techniques and being with like-minded people. So there's nothing that you could do that is wrong. And if yours looks different than your neighbors, then applaud yourself on your uniqueness. I encourage, encourage you to try different things, a little bit different colors, different shading, enjoy the process. No, oh, and Deborah, don't worry, it's a sunflower. That's what they look like. You said your ochre is sort of a, a mustardy brown. That's okay. That's what ochre, now mine looks a little bit bright in my picture, but we're going to dull that down anyways. I'm going to give you a big project to do. And while I give you this big project to do, I know it's going to take you a little bit to do. And don't worry about if your ochre isn't uh, as bright as mine. We're going to cover it with lots of other colors. So we're going to take ochre and we're going to paint all of the petals to the black line. So we're going to paint all the way to the black line. I'm just going to do my center one and then I'm going to read our meditation card for today while you're doing the rest. So you're just coming inside your blue line. So I'll show you mine. I've only got the center petal done. Um, I will do the rest when I'm done reading. But I'm just doing this to show you where you're painting inside the blue line. This is wet on dry. So you're painting ochre. Um, you're going to paint all of your petals. And while you're painting, I will read the May You Know Joy meditation card for everyday living. This is called Creativity. May you know creativity. May you know the force of your creativity. There are so many colorful ways for you to express your ideas and your feelings and your energy. What colors will you use? How will you move? What mood will you evoke? How will it be different from yesterday? You are creating every moment of your life in everything that you do. You hold the palette and wield the brush. Be patient, or passionately and patiently creative. So may you know creativity. So thank you to the person that chose that card today. That's a wonderful way to express what we're doing. And we'll just continue on with painting all those petals. Don't worry about this separation. We are going to separate those petals with different colors.
So we're just creating the base for our flower. If your ochre touches the blue and you start to pick up a little bit of green, which sometimes happens, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You're still going to put more colors over top and it may just add to your picture. We'll just leave the ladybug white. We're just doing the petals. If for whatever reason, any of you painted over your ladybug, that's okay. We're going to paint her black or red with black dots anyways. Some of your petals may be lighter or darker in different spots. Again, we are going to go over and give these petals more definition with different color. So while I have a moment in between, I'm just adding a little bit of water just tapping a little bit of water onto the next colors that I'm going to use. So I know I'm going to use red. I have a cadmium red. I have an orange. It's actually called quinacridone red, but it is more orange. If you have yellow and red mixed together, that will make a nice orange. So if I take my cadmium red and my yellow, and I mix them together, I'm going to come up with orange. That's just mixing yellow and cadmium red. So using that orange color that I've got, I'm going to do the outer edge, the white part that I have left before between my flower and the black outline, and I'm going to paint that orange. Now, if I, if I don't have orange, and my red doesn't look quite as bright as I want it to be, we can use burnt sienna. So I can go ahead, I'm gonna actually put that on top. So I've got orange, and then I'm putting a bit of burnt sienna on top. So I've got a little bit of blend of two colors in there. So if you've got your outer leaves done, then we're putting orange in between that beaded dotted line that we put inside with the burnt umber and the black outline. So if you've made a puddle of orange, hang on to some of that orange, just set it aside. We will use it again on the petals, but not just yet. So if you have a chance, you wanna make up a little extra batch of mixture, that's fine, you have time. So we've got that orange and then a little bit of a burnt sienna on top for that golden look. Now these petals, we're going to paint the tops of the petals and they overlap at the top. So this, this top petal from the top corner down to where it meets the center overlaps that top petal. When I come to the next petal, I'm coming down the petal around. Kathy, what color is that? 
This is red. It's cadmium red. Okay. Thank you. Whatever red you've been using, if you've been mixing, you just stay with the same red for your ladybug. So the petals overlap the petal below, and we're only doing the top edge of the petal. We're not doing the bottom. So each one overlaps. And you can, if you want, do the outside, the top flower on the outside edge. So my orange color I'm going to use, I'm lightening it a little bit with water. I don't want it to be completely solid orange, but I'm going to start and fill in my petals, not completely. I'm leaving some spots deliberately, lighter than darker, but I'm starting to add that orange color on top of the ochre. So if you were unhappy with your ochre, then this is a good opportunity to cover some of that over. So we're adding orange. We've got that nice outline of the red. If we're hitting the red and it's starting to blend a little bit, we can add that in with the color. I'm going over the whole leaf and if it's not completely even in all places, that's okay. That's what I want. I want that leaf to start to look like it's got different undertones on different petals. You see some are lighter in spots and some are darker. So there's no exam at the end that we look and we say, oh my, you've not done it right. I'm quite content that you're even here. So Congratulate yourself for trying so trying something new. And once you're done that, then we're going to start to add our orange color that we created or orange if you've got it we're putting on, on top of the ochre. Well, because those petals are wet, we're still going to give them some more definition, but because we want to let them dry just a little bit longer, sometimes in watercolor, it's about timing, waiting the right length of time or just a little bit before you go into your next color, even if you want it to blend, they blend differently if you wait just a couple of minutes. So we're going to leave the petals on the outside and we're going back to the center of our flower. Because watercolor dries 20 to 30% lighter from when you put it on, we're going to go back with the same color ochre. And I'm going to use the point of my brush and ochre. And I'm going to put dots, a beaded look again, but there's a distance between them the look of seeds in the middle of my flower. And I'm going to do the whole inside of my flower in that fashion. They don't all have to be completely even. You're just doing a rounded circle or oval, half circle of Fresh ochre or gamboge, if that's what you've got. So we're just creating the look of seeds in the center of our flower, giving our leaves or petals just that extra bit of time to dry. Kathy, my center is really dark, so I'm not sure what to 
do to make a look of seeds. Are you aware of how to lift off paint? So if I wet my brush and just tap it off so that it's just damp and I rub, tap my brush off so I'm taking, and I continue to do that just lightly, not to damage the paper, but enough that it will start to, the paint has no choice but to move. You're lifting off paint. If I continue to do that, so I'm not using a soaking wet brush, I'm just using a damp brush, and I'm just rubbing and wiping off the paint on paper towel, dampening my brush again and going back again, and repeating that process, then I can lighten. You see how it's taken the paint off the center? So you can do that process, wait for it to dry, and then you can go back and put those seeds on. So if you do that process, wait and just leave it and we'll go on to the leaves. And then you'll be able to go back near the end and put those dots on because it should be dry enough then. And if it does start to blend a little bit, that's okay too. So if you've never tried the lifting off technique and you're doing that now, it'd be interesting to see how, how well that works for you. It takes time, it takes practice, but it is doable. So I'm going to go into burnt sienna next and I'm going to lighten that up a little bit with water. And with the burnt sienna, I'm going to start to create on my petals, just a few little lines coming up from the base into the petal. So I'm going to go in the same direction as the petal goes. So you can see the petal is curved in, I'm going in. So this is watered down burnt sienna. I'm following the direction that the petal goes. And we've got our ladybug on top. Her body is red, red, red. So I'm giving her a cadmium red body. I'm just painting her whole body in this really bright red. She's having fun sitting up there. I'm not painting her head. I'm not painting the dots and I'm not painting under her just yet. And I'm going to paint her little head black. So she's got a little round head and I'm going to paint it completely black. Oops, right down to the bottom. And I'm going to give her her little antennas, those two little black antennas. So there is a black line underneath her, but I'm not going to paint that yet. I'm still going to give that red a little more time to dry. And while that's drying, I'm, paint, I'm clearing my paintbrush off in my clear water. I'm tapping it off, just tapping off the edges so I don't have excess water but I'm going to do a bit of a wash with clear water on all of my leaves. So I'm just doing a wash of clear water over top of my leaf or petal on each petal. 
So it's just clear water, just getting the whole thing wet. I'm not trying to change colors. I'm not trying to move colors, but by putting this clear water on, those colors will start to soften on right on the petal, avoiding where my ladybug is. I'm just going to paint that leaf with clear water. So I'm just giving the whole, all of the petals, just a clear wash. So not too much water. If it starts to run, you can use your paper towel and just lightly touch the edge and pick up any extra water very lightly. If you press too heavily, you'll be lifting color off. You should start to see that the colors that you put on there are starting to meld together a little bit and look a little bit softer. So if you're looking at painting a forest and you want the backing, the backdrop to be softer, then adding a wash of water, just clear water, will do that. Now I'm back to my ladybug. I'm going to draw a line from the head of my ladybug to the back of my ladybug. So that's my ladybug shadow underneath her. And with the tip of my brush, and just to ensure that I have a really uh, a, a pointed um, tip, I'm, I roll my brush and just clear off any excess black paint. So I just twist it and roll it a little bit on my tray. And that gives me just enough black paint on the tip. And I'm going to give Ladybug some dots. So that red should be dry enough that those black dots just sit on top. Oh, you put some clear water on the leaves, is that what it was? Yes, I just, not a whole lot of water. So you can get your brush wet. You can do it at the end if you like, or you can do it later. It's not critical to do it right now, but what that does is it softens your colors. So it's just a clear wash over the leaves. And we have a couple more minutes, so I'm going to give Ladybug a face. So I'm using white. Chinese white is the color that I have. And I'm giving her two eyes and a little tiny mouth. She's a happy Ladybug. Well, maybe it's a grimace. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not really a smile there. That's more of a smile, <laughs> but she looks like a pumpkin. And I'm going to give Ladybug. At the top, because the sunlight's hitting the top of Ladybug, I'm going to give her a slash of white, which looks like the sunlight is hitting her back. So if you put that on and it's not quite as dark or as light as you want it to be, then try just a little bit more paint, less water. She's an overly happy ladybug, that one. <laughs> Maybe over the top happy. And last thing we need to do is think about where are you going to put your artist signature? I like to incorporate mine into the picture. And so I'm going to put mine right on my, one of my leaves near the bottom. So 
It's up to you where you sign it. Sometimes I were to say that bottom right hand corner and you need to date it, that's entirely up to you. So there you go. Hopefully you're happy with what you've done. And if not, you've got the drawing, you've, you've got the idea and you can go ahead and you can repeat this process, make it with different colors, different backgrounds. It's entirely up to you. And so there is, that is what you can do in one hour. 